everyone, it's Justine, and today we're going to be exploring five ways on how you can use vellum in your card making or if you use vellum for any type of paper crafting, this is going to be for you. I tried to find five ways that maybe you haven't thought of quite yet. So for example, if you didn't think that you could foil with vellum, you were very wrong. I'm going to show you how or one of the ways I figured it out. So I can't wait to show you all five techniques. So let's dive in with all five ways that we can use vellum. Now my first technique is using alcohol inks. I'm using a piece of vellum that's four by five and a quarter inches. This is from Simon Says Stamp. And I'm going to be using some new to my channel alcohol inks in gold, yellow, and pink. These are the Jacquard Pinata alcohol inks. And I'm applying them to a piece of felt attached to a blending tool. And I'm just going into my cardstock here going in a back and forth motion, twisting and turning so the colors start blending in together. And you can get a better view here as to how I'm swinging my brush kind of back and forth and rubbing it into the vellum. Now, depending on how many layers you do, this should dry relatively instantly on your first layer. And just keep going until you're happy with it. I think this adds a little something. And if you ever run out of alcohol ink cardstock, this is a great way to be able to use your alcohol ink still or vice versa. Now these particularly colors work just like Ranger, but I did want to show you the gold, for example, what it looks like when you put it on your cardstock and how it just kind of explodes when it goes onto the vellum. Or this works similar on alcohol ink cardstock. I think it's absolutely stunning and one of the best gold alcohol inks on the market. Another one that's really great is white. Look how much of a pigment you get on there. It's absolutely cool. You can add it to a background that's already been done and blended in, or you can add this as a color on your alcohol inks as you're applying them. Completely up to you, but it's a great way to get a bit of a lighter look. Now, if you want to get a bit of a foiled appearance on this, you can hold your cardstock up to the light and you can see here, there are some areas that aren't dry. They feel sticky to the touch. I always like to compare this to if I were to leave some juice on a surface for a day or overnight, you know how it gets that sticky syrupy feel where it shines against the light, but it's sticky to the touch, but it's dry, if that makes sense. That's the look that you're going for on your cardstock. And if you have that look, you can apply foil over top. This will work with all types of foil, whether you have the thermal transfer foil, I think it's called, or the deco foil, it doesn't really matter. And just grab a bone folder and go over top and those areas that are still sticky will actually keep the foil on there. Very, very cool. To finish off the card, originally I had backed it with some black cardstock and a best wishes die from my favorite things in white, but then I changed my mind and switched the black background to a white background just to make it pop even more. Now, if you're curious about adhering vellum, keep watching and I'll talk about my latest and favorite adhesive to be using with vellum. My second technique that I wanted to talk about today is stamping on vellum. And there's a couple of tips and tricks to getting it done right. And the one thing that's really helpful to know is how your inks actually work. So you're going to need an ink where it specifically says on it that it's for non-porous surfaces. And oftentimes it'll say heat set as well. Like this Gina K Obsidian ink is a great ink for stamping on vellum. It's the type of ink that you need, but don't forget that you need to heat set it. When you're heat setting, it's really helpful to have this wow heat embossing tool, the Ranger, almost like the hair dryer one works really well also, and you're going to need it on a low setting so your vellum doesn't really warp when you're heating it up. It's a perfect thing. If you only have a heating tool that works for heat embossing, so an intense heat, make sure you're moving around your heat tool a lot so that your vellum doesn't warp and misshapen. Now the second technique that is really important when you're stamping on vellum is that you use a misty stamping tool or any type of stamping tool. Vellum is a slippery surface. So every time I would try and stamp in the exact spot and lift up, my block would kind of go off to the right or go to the side just a little bit and I'd get a smudged image. So it's super important that you're using some sort of stamping tool that keeps your paper in place and your stamp in place so it's really easy to lift up and down and it doesn't give you any issues. 
Now, one of the ways that you can attach vellum to your cardstock, and there are a ton of ways to actually go about doing it, is using a tape runner specifically for vellum. There are two that I know of on the market that are quite decently good. I'm not saying they're perfect, but they're pretty good. This one here is new to me. It's Plus, it's called. The brand name is Plus, I believe, and it's a vellum adhesive, and it's a tape runner. I still use it quite sparingly, only adding it in the corners. And then there is also the one from Tombow, which I also like. I'm going to finish off this card with this great stamp and die combination from Altenew. What I like about this is both the stamp and the die set function as standalone pieces and also together. So I have die cut one of these really thin funky frames in both white and the banana yellow cardstock. So I grabbed the frame, the detailed part in yellow cardstock to match my background. And then I have the white cardstock here in which I can stamp my sentiment. And the sentiments are here, or you can use any sentiment from your stash, but these ones here fit perfectly inside, which is fun. Now I've gone ahead and attached my sentiment and the little frame around it, and I don't think it takes away too much from the flower behind it, but it's overall a very, very pretty card. And with the vellum, it kind of tones down the colored cardstock a little bit. So there are so many properties when it comes to using vellum. There is vellum that is thick, thin, that has different levels of opacities. So you have to pick which one's best for you. And it's not a bad thing to own a few different brands of vellum. My favorite personally is from Catherine Pooler. I really love the thickness of her vellum and I love it for going over top of backgrounds and things because I think it has the perfect amount of letting enough show through, but still showing that there's vellum. There are also thinner vellums available. And the one that I'm using particularly in this video is from Simon Says Stamp. And because I'm in the process of moving still and my stuff still hasn't arrived, this is the only brand that I have on hand at the moment. But it is another one of my favorites. It's a little on the thinner side, a little less opaque than the Catherine Pooler version. But I did want you to know that there are different makes and models of vellum, different thicknesses, thinnesses. And if you're working with things like pastes and mediums and embossing, I recommend a thicker vellum. And if you're using things like just plain stamping or just using it to die cut or using it to cover a background, then any sort of vellum, thick or thin, really is perfect. One of my favorite ways to use vellum, and it's very, very elegant, is to create a belly band. Now, not all cards are created in the standard A2 size. So to create a gatefold card, it's gonna be eight and a half by five and a half inches. And instead of scoring down in the middle like you would for a normal card, you're going to go ahead and you're going to score at two and one eighth on each side. That way, when you fold your panels in, your card will open up from the center instead of the side. Now to decorate this card just very quickly, I went ahead and stamped in some black ink the Gina K Majestic Peony stamp, which I used in my last video, and I die cut the center of it using this really great nesting die set from the Stamp Market. I ran this through my Gemini Junior die cutting machine, and then it was all ready to add to the front of my card. Using some tape runner, I went ahead and just added tape runner to one half of this die cut that I just cut out. And this is going to act sort of as an opener for the front of my card. Now to create a belly band, what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut yourself a piece of vellum. I always leave the 11 inches as is from the eight and a half by 11 sheet of vellum so that I can see exactly how much I need to cut off when I add my card. So I'm grabbing my card, I'm laying it in about the center. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm grabbing my pencil and I'm making a pencil mark on either side of the cardstock. I'm then gonna go ahead and put score lines where those pencil marks are using whatever score tool that you have, whether it's a stylus and a ruler, a score tool attached to your paper trimmer like mine, or a score pal. Don't forget to erase your pencil marks when you're all finished there and you're just going to carefully fold those. Now, when it comes to scoring on vellum, be sure not to score too hard using your scoring tool because it will crack the vellum. So a very, very light fold is good enough. So I'm just going to fold in these score lines, reinforcing with my bone folder, and then you'll know if you need to cut anything off. But if it overlaps, it's really not a big deal. Just add some vellum, and then you're going to close your belly band. And it should fit perfectly around your card. The idea is you don't want it to be so tight that it's hard to pull off, but not too loose that it slips off. So you're just going to run that over top of your card, and now it's a great way to hold your card together. 
You could even go ahead and decorate that belly band by adding your sentiment for your card directly on it or decorate it with some flowers. I'm using this hugs die from Concord and Ninth and I'm die cutting it in both white and black. Just be careful when you're gluing your sentiment on that you glue directly on the belly band and not on the card because then your belly band won't come off. And I added a couple little hearts. This comes with the Hugs Sentiment die. It's one of my favorite dies. I've had it for years. I love the font of it, the thickness of it, and I like the fact that it comes with these little hearts too. Okay, so here's a final look at that card before we proceed into our next technique, which is going to feature heat embossing. Now, heat embossing on vellum can be a little bit tricky to not warp your cardstock, but still have enough heat to melt the embossing powder. So I'm going to give you some tips and tricks. So to begin this card, I'm going to actually be stamping it on black ink on a piece of white cardstock. The cardstock I'm using today is four and a quarter by five and a half, and I'm going to clean off my stamp. I'm going to be placing a piece of vellum that is slightly smaller than my flower. You could even make it smaller than the one that I'm using. I'm then going to go ahead and prep my vellum with an embossing bag. This is really important because vellum can have a lot of static because it is like a plastic. I'm going to go ahead and add some Versamark ink just like I would when I'm heat embossing on normal cardstock. I'm going to make sure my vellum is in place by adding the magnet there. I'm stamping directly over top, which means it's going to be in the exact same spot as the image that I stamped in black. I'm going to go ahead and add some gold embossing powder over top. And if any powder sticks to areas you don't want it to stick to, just grab a dry brush and try and take it off as best as you can. So I like to give it a good flick as well to get all the embossing powder off just to make sure. Now, when you are heating up your embossing piece on top of your vellum, you're going to want to make sure your heat tool has run for about a minute before you even apply it to your vellum. So it's nice and hot. And vellum makes the embossing powder melt a lot faster than cardstock. So you want to kind of go to the back and the front and alternate between the two of them. You are always in my case, in my opinion, going to get a little bit of warping when it comes to heat embossing on vellum, but it shouldn't be too bad if you alternate from front to back, you heat up your heat tool beforehand, and you try not to stay in one area for too long. Once again, I'm attaching this using my tape runner, but you could attach it with brads, eyelets, anything you want. Stitching. And then I'm just going to push firmly onto my cardstock. And I finished this card here with the kind word stamp from Altenew. May the memories of your loved one bring you comfort during this time of sorrow. So my question of the day today is how do you craft? Do you craft in silence, listening to music, audiobooks, podcasts? Do you watch TV? Or is it more of a practice that you do quietly? I would love to know below in the comments. Please let me know. I'm super curious. I tend to do a range of different things. Sometimes I'm just quiet, especially when I'm doing things tedious like coloring and things that focus a lot, need a lot of my attention. Or I listen to something like a classical music or a study playlist on Spotify. Another thing I really love lately are podcasts and audiobooks. I find with my hobby, I don't get a lot of time for reading these days, so it's kind of like killing two birds with one stone. And now and again, when I get caught up in a really great series, I will watch a series from now and again on TV as well. I just finished watching Money Heist. Loved it. So let me know below in the comments what you like to do when you're crafting. So I'm going to be teaching the last technique now, which is foiling on vellum. Now, I'm going to be using this Transfer Gel Duo. This is a new transfer gel from Thermoweb that allows you to foil uh, through a stencil or in general by applying it and letting it dry. Now, I've used this before, and before in the old version, you used to have to run this through a laminator for it to work. And this one here works without heat. So this is why it's allowing you to actually add foiling on vellum. Another way I'm going to try it in the future is with my foil quill, but that's for another time. So I'm going to cover my stencil here with the Transfer Gel Duos. You don't want to make it super thick. Um, and I would recommend, as I said, I only have one type of vellum on me right now. I would recommend a thicker vellum for this. You'll notice that mine warped a little bit by adding the medium to it under the pressure of the liquid. 
So you want it to completely dry. It will be clear when it's dry, not white sort of clear or white. You're gonna add your foil on top and then you're just gonna give it a rub with your fingers or you can run it through a die cutting machine. Now mine was a little bit wet still when I had done this technique. So my stars aren't as defined as I'd like them to be, but overall I'm super happy that I'm able to foil on vellum. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching my video today on the five ways to use vellum on your projects. I hope you learned something new. If you did, let me know in the comments which technique was your favorite and which one you think you might wanna try out next. I'm super curious to know. And don't forget, if you ever make anything inspired by one of my videos, please tag me on Instagram or on Facebook so I can take a look. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. And don't forget to check out the suggested video below. And I'll see you next week for another video. Bye for now.